Hello grade 9 learners, have a nice day. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'll be discussing to you about inverse variation. After watching this video, you will be able to answer the following. How to determine inverse variation? Second, how to translate inverse variation statement? And last, how to solve worded problems involving inverse variation? Let us describe first about inverse variation. Talking about inverse variation, it occurs whenever a situation produces pairs of numbers whose product is constant. And this will be explained further in the next slide. Next, the statement y varies inversely to x translate to y is equal to k over x, where k is the constant of variation. For two quantities x and y, an increase in x causes a decrease in y, or vice versa. We can say that y varies inversely as x, or y is equal to k over x. Let's have an example of inverse variation. Mr. Ja, the manager of Aegis Company, has recorded the number of hours to finish a certain job with the corresponding number of people on the job as follows. So this is the table of values being recorded by Mr. Ja. Number of people on the job in the first row and in the second row we have here number of hours to finish the job. So we have 12 people can finish the job in two hours. So six people finish the job in four hours. Four people finish the job for six hours and three people finish the job on eight hours. So if you have observed, as the number of hours to finish increases, we have here in this row, the number of people on the job decreases. In other words, they are opposite. So, for the, the first row, there is a thread for decreasing. But for the second row, our trend here is increasing. Okay? Now, if you have the table of values only, how will we know that that is an inverse variation? Aside from the two facts that one variable is decreasing while the other is increasing, we can check the product between the two variables. So if we're going to represent the number of people on the job as n and the number of hours to finish the job as t, once we multiply 12 and 2, or the two variables, their product is constant. So let's try to check. So we have 12 times 2, of course, the answer is 24. 6 times 4 is also 24. 4 times 6 is 24, and 3 times 8 is 24. This is one of the characteristics of inverse variation. So when you will be given a table of values in a table form, just check the product because inverse variation occurs whenever a situation produces pairs of numbers whose product is constant. So we have to multiply and if the product is constant, then that is an inverse variation. So in here we can say that the number of hours to finish the job varies inversely to the number of people on the job. This is a very typical example of inverse variation. Okay, before we go on with translation, because translation is very important in solving worded problems, always remember that the statements y varies inversely as x 
or y is inversely proportional to x is being translated as y is equal to k over x, meaning to say that these two statements have the same translation, which is y is equal to k over x because it's inverse, okay? And k here is also the constant of variation. Now, let's have an example. The first statement here, the temperature being denoted by T at which water boils varies inversely as the number of feet h above the sea level. So the temperature is being denoted by capital letter T, so it should be here. And of course, constant operation K is on the numerator and the other variable. Okay, we have here denoted by H, so it is in the denominator. So this is the translation for this statement. Next, atmospheric pressure, P, varies inversely as the altitude, A. So the translation for this is we have P, our numerator is constant K over the Altitude denoted by A. So this is now the translation. Third, the number of hours T required to finish a certain job is inversely proportional as the number of persons and on the job. So T, number of hours, and K is on the numerator, number of persons on the job, and on the denominator part. Now let's solve worded problems involving inverse variation. Number one, if y varies inversely as x and y is equal to 16 when x is equal to 2, find y when x is equal to 4. Okay, first we have to translate the statement. We will be using the variable being given. So in here, the variables are y and x. So we have to follow. So, we have to solve for k, but before we have to solve for k, we have to write first the equation. So, y varies inversely as x, so we have here y is equal to numerator k over x. Now, we have to solve for k. Now, let's substitute first. Our y here is 16. Okay, just copy K and our X is 2. Okay, next we have to solve for K. We have to multiply 16 times 2. So 16 times 2, that is equal to 32. So 32 is the value of our K or the constant of variation. Now we have to solve for our Y when x is equal to 4. So we have to make use of the same equation. y is equal to k over x. So this time, our k is 32. We have to make use of this value. So we have 32, and our x here is 4. Now divide 32 divided by 4, that is equal to 8. So we have now the value of y, which is equal to 8, when x is equal to 4. Second example, if y varies inverse less x and y is equal to 8 when x is equal to 4, find x when y is equal to 96. So in here, x is a known. So same process with number 1. Translate first the statement. So we have here y varies inversely as x so k over x next substitute so our y here is 8 so we have here 8 then just copy k and our x is 3 now solve for k so multiply 8 times 3 that is equal to 24 so the value of k is equal to 
24. Next, we have to solve for x. We have to make use of the same equation. y is equal to k over x. So our k this time is equal to 24. And our y is 96. Now let's solve for x. Divide 24 divided by 96. So just reduce this one to the lowest term. This is in term of fraction. So we have 1 fourth. So meaning to say x is equal to 1 fourth when y is equal to 96. Now let's have the third example. Find a constant of variation in which y varies inversely as x and y is equal to 30 when x is equal to 2. Okay, in here we're asked to find the value of k. So same with the previous example, we have to translate first a statement. So y varies inversely as x, so we have k over x. And the value of y is equal to 30, substitute and our x is equal to 2. So to solve for k, we have to multiply 30 times 2, and that is equal to 60. So therefore, 60 is the value of k, which is the constant of variation. Another example. The number of hours required to finish a certain job varies inversely as the number of persons on the job. If nine persons require 10 hours to finish the job, how long should it be? How long should it take for 30 persons to finish the job? So this is word problems that involves inverse variation. So since we are dealing with worded problem, first we have to assign a certain variable to represent for the unknown. So in here, we have to let t as the number of hours required to finish the job, and n, number of people on the job. Next, we have to translate the statement using the variable that we have assigned. So we have here the number of hours required to finish a job, various inverses number of persons on the job. So we have to base our translation on this statement where t and n variable will be used. So we have now t is equal to k over n. So this is now the translation of this statement after we assigned a certain variable to represent for the unknown. Okay, now we have to solve for k. Let's substitute. So our t here is 10 because it requires 10 hours for them to finish the job. And the number of persons working on the job is 9. That's why we have here 9. So to solve for k, we have to multiply 10 times 9, that is equal to 90. So meaning to say that the value of k is equal to 90. Now we will be using this value to solve for, for the unknown, which is t. When 30 persons are working on the job. Because the question is asking for time. Now let's substitute. So our k here is 90. 90, so we have here 90. And this time our n is 30. Okay, so let's divide. 90 divided by 30, that is equal to 3. So therefore, it will take 3 hours. Do not forget to write the conclusion. And this 3 here refers to hours. So it will take 3 hours for 30 persons to finish the job. Now let's have another example. To balance a lever or seesaw, the weight varies inversely with the distance of the object from the fulcrum. If John weighing 63 kilograms is sitting 7 feet from the fulcrum, 
Where should his brother Leo, who weighs 45 kilograms, should sit in order to balance the seesaw? So first, we have to assign a certain variable to represent for the unknown. So in here, we let W as the weight of an object. So our object here is a person and D is equal to the distance of an object from the fulcrum. You can assign any variable to represent for the unknown. Next, we have to translate the statement. The weight varies inversely with the distance of the object from the fulcrum. That is equal to W. That is equal to K over D. Next, we have to substitute. The weight of John is 63, 63 kilograms. So that's why we have here 63. And he is sitting 7 feet. So we have here 7. Now solve for K. So 63 times 7, that is equal to 441. Next, we have to solve for D. We will be using the same equation. So W equals K over D. This time, we will be using the weight of Leo, who is weighing 45 kilograms. So that's why we have here 45. Okay, next, our K, we have already the value of K, 441. To solve for D, we have to divide 441 divided by 45, and that is equal to 9.8. So do not forget in your conclusion to use the unit being used in problem. So in here, the unit being used is in terms of fit. So therefore, Leo should sit 9.8 feet from the fulcrum in order to balance the seesaw. Thank you so much for watching guys and kindly like and if you have questions just write it in the comment box. Please share it to other grade 9 learners for them to learn or master the lesson. And don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos and turn on the bell for notifications. Before I end, let me share to you one of the verses from the Bible. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Matthew 5 verse 11. That's all for today and God bless you all.